I've spent the past few days wearing the brand new Rincon Gen 2. And let's just say this is not your average smart ring. This is my Rincon Gen 2 review and stick around because things get interesting. Upon uh, considering this purchase, I did get the Rincon, the free Rincon ring sizing kit. This comes free and fast, so I figured why not? Uh, comes with sizes 6 through 14, and these are identical sort of uh, replicas of the actual ring. Um, so if you can get a ring sizing kit, I would highly recommend it because why not? And here we go, the Rincon Gen 2, right? out the gate this feels incredibly nice i love how this feels it has this very cool shape to it which i already prefer over some of the other smart rings out there on the market and the matte black is a really nice finish and let's just slide it on the ring real quick right out the gate that feels awesome i love how this looks this is more my style let's continue with the unboxing right here we have ring con a little pamphlet some goodies under there now right in here we have a usb-c charging cable uh, at a decent size too now last but not least this should be the compact charging case i mean geez this feels like a luxury product that is awesome it's almost like like you could propose with this thing that is really really cool i'm in love with that so with the accessories to the side let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Rincon gen 2 smart ring first impressions um, amazing i love it so far this ring itself is made from durable titanium alloy which makes it very light and it also makes it very durable i got the matte black which is right here there is also royal gold a rose gold and a future silver is what they call it so all the colors honestly are really cool and i know for a fact i'm not the only one who thinks this is a good looking ring because Rincon for this ring won the if design award uh, for its ergonomic design the rounded inside the sort of squared outside that i described earlier during the unboxing very stylish very cool it's small little things like that that make a difference so the weight of this ring the ring con gen 2 is between two to three grams the previous version gen 1 was between three to five grams they made a significant improvement there the thickness of this ring is two millimeters whereas the Gen 1 was 2.66 millimeters. So they shaved off 0.66 millimeters on the thickness of this. And the width is 6.8 millimeters, which I believe is the same as Gen 1. And there's also a waterproofing upgrade. So this is IP68 rated up to 100 meters. That I'm very happy about because again, I bartend on the weekend. So I'm constantly washing my hands. I'm constantly dipping my hand in sinks full of soap and sanitizer and really hot water and my hands are always wet and or slippery so the fact that it's waterproof water resistant very very nice i love that now let's talk about the battery life and the charging case if you got a ring size six through seven they say it'll last 10 days on a full charge if you got ring size eight through 11 which is my case it will last 11 days and if you got the bigger sizes, size 12 through 14, it'll last up to 12 days. This charging case holds 15 to 20 full charges for your ring. So that means that's up to 150 plus days on the, on the conservative side of power for this ring without having to plug this into anything. That, my friends, is awesome. That's a thoughtful product right there. If you're even remotely curious about smart rings, the Rincon Gen 2 so far is making a strong first impression with its sleek design, impressive battery life, and zero subscriptions. If you're ready to check out the Rincon Gen 2, there is a discount linked in the description below this video, or you can scan the QR code on screen right here. Now it's time to download the Rincon app, pair it with the ring itself so we can start collecting data. All right, let's go ahead and open up the app. Right now at the bottom here, there's a small button that says connect ring, searching for ring, pairing, pair it successfully. And I think that's it. So this is what the app is giving us. This looks like the uh, dashboard here. At the bottom, there's this blue AI button, which is interesting. 
So there is an AI chatbot built into the RingCon app, which is honestly really cool. It's still in the beta phase, but I'm interested to see how this is gonna play out over the next few days. It looks like I can ask it questions on how active am I, how did I sleep, my stress level. Second thing I wanna mention is that this app, the RingCon app, does sync up with Apple Health and Google Fit. So if you use those apps, you're good. Personal data transmission, storage, and analysis are all strictly encrypted and processed on AWS servers located in the United Kingdom. So your data is safe with RingCon. Now for best results, you should wear it on your index finger where the sensors are proposed to be the most accurate. However, when I was sizing uh, with the ring sizing kit for free that you saw earlier, I sized it for my ring finger because I like to wear my rings here, not here because they tend to get in the way more of my day-to-day -day activities and of my other jobs uh, when I wear them on my index finger. So I'm still getting good accurate data, but they suggest that you size it for your ring finger. But either way, for something this light and subtle, it delivers way more insight than you'd expect. If these features sound like what you've been missing in your health and wellness routine, don't forget the Health News team and I have worked out a special discount code just for you. It's linked in the description down below, or there's a QR code on screen right now that you can scan. The RingCon Gen 2 packs a lot of value without locking you in to monthly fees, which I can appreciate and I'm sure you can too. So I've been wearing the RingCon Gen 2 for a few days now, about four days, going into my fifth day, and I have some opinions that I think you're gonna wanna hear. Some good, some great, and some where things could use improvement. So let's get right into it. First thing I wanna cover is day-to-day -day comfort of the ring. I'm gonna make this very short and sweet for you. The ring is incredibly comfortable to wear. I forgot that I was wearing it within the first minute. Now granted, I have worn rings in the past. I've worn other smart rings, and so I'm used to it, right? But even if you're not used to wearing rings, I would assume that you would get over this within an hour or a day, for sure. It's just super sleek, super lightweight, uh, fits on the ring very, very well. You don't notice that it's there. It doesn't bother you. It doesn't feel like you're wearing an incredible piece of tech. It feels like you're just wearing a cool little ring. And I do wanna mention something else too, is on, on the weekends, part-time job, I bartend, and I'm using my hands a lot. I'm dunking my hands into sinks of hot water filled with soap and sanitizer. I'm uh, dealing with uh, metal shakers to shake cocktails and a lot of glassware and my constantly washing my hands. Even in those scenarios, I didn't notice the ring at all. There was no problems. Dunking it in the water, washing my hands, dealing with glassware or metal tins, nothing. Very comfortable. So I give them a lot of credit for what they did here. Not only is the design sleek, light, and beautiful, but also very easy to wear and very comfortable. So let's go ahead and open up the Ring Con app. This is the dashboard. We have the wellness balance at the top here, and it tells me that I have a wellness balance score of 84, and it says great potential ahead. So that means that I can probably crush a workout today, which I did. It means I can probably you know, have more output brain-wise and body-wise through the day, which is nice. So that's always the first thing that it shows you, and that is a very important metric that I like to keep watch of. I have a good score today. That's awesome. At the bottom, it says better sleeping skin temperature leaves you feeling refreshed and invigorated. Keep it up. So the fact that it says keep it up means that I guess my sleeping skin temperature has been pretty good. So let's confirm that because the second metric that I want to go over is the sleep section. And I think most people wear this ring to get deeper insights into their sleep because sleep is probably the most important thing for living a long healthy life. So as you can see, the sleep section on the dashboard is very limited. It doesn't really tell us much information. Uh, it just says a time. It says eight hours, 27 minutes. What is that? Is that total time in bed? Is that how long I was actually asleep? The good thing is though, I can just simply tap on that section and now we can get into the data. It says, excellent. I got a score of 87. Time asleep, eight hours and 27 minutes. Sleep efficiency, 91%. Excellent sleep quality will keep you energized today. And I do feel really good, that's a fact. I know that for myself, but it's nice to see that validated via my metrics, right? If we scroll a little bit further, we have total time asleep. 
Sleep duration is normal within the range of your set sleep goal. Uh, I can click further into this, and here is where it'll show me my REM sleep, my light sleep, my deep sleep, and how often I was awake. This will also give me information on my heart rate throughout the night, my heart rate variability, and my blood oxygen levels, or SpO2, which is really nice. So it does give us a ton of information, right? Which is really nice. And as you can see, there's information icons next to everything. So respiratory rate, right? What does that mean? How does that relate to my sleep? Let's click the information icon and it'll give me a paragraph and some information about what that means and why I should care. Now I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and here is my heart rate through the night. And as you can see, at 3.19, right around 3.30 in the morning, my heart rate jumped up to 98 beats per minute after being at a pretty solid baseline of low 70s and then a jump up in the middle of the night. Now, here's what I wanna show you guys, this nap section. I did take a nap earlier today and it knew that I took a nap. It showed me my nap. I woke up, took my kid to school, came back home and slept for another couple hours and earlier this was here, but now it's not. But maybe if I scroll back up in this section here, okay, total time asleep. So as you can see, the purple bar at the left goes just past 6 a.m., that was my sleep. And then there's another purple bar uh, just before 12 noon, that was my nap. So I guess it recategorized it as sleep because as you can see, the sleep is purple and the naps are sort of that yellow. Another category I wanna dive into is the stress section. As you can see, it says my stress levels are normal and that I'm at peace and joy. Now you could ask me personally, do I feel at peace and joy? Not all the time, we're all human, right? Life is life. But according to my app, my body is at peace, right? And based off of my heart rate variability, that is what is giving me this information. So I guess my heart rate variability is at a solid place. Again, we have stress ratios, sleeping stress. You know, am I stressed before sleep or during sleep? It'll tell me that information. Again, based off of my heart rate variability. Let's go back to the dashboard here. Again, we have vital signs. Exercise, this is where I can log my workouts because remember, it doesn't detect them automatically, but it will track my activity. So under the activity tab, I can see how many steps I took, how many calories burned, how much time I was active for, right? All these different points of data and information that are fun to look at, to get to know. Now, some of this, like for example, this graph here, activity intensity, low, average of awake state. And then it has these dots on the graph, like how practical is that information? I don't really know. To me, that just seems like a little bit of noise within the app. Um, some of these graphs, don't really mean too much and don't give me too much practical information on what to do with it or what it means. And that's just my honest thoughts. Um, the app does give you a ton of data and it will tell you what that data means, but I don't know how relevant a lot of it is, at least for me in my life personally. You might be seeing some things on this app and going, ooh, I do want that information. Well, there you go, then it's good for you. So again, all this information, it's collecting over time and it'll give you summaries of how your body is reacting to different things. So it is a good app that gives you a lot of information, a little bit noisy, not the most intuitive app, if I'm being honest. I would like to see some updates made to the design um, and how the information is displayed. The ring makes me go, ooh, I like this. This is a really good product. The app, given it does have a lot of good information, makes me go, eh, I've kind of seen better. You know what I mean? Now, did I change any of my behaviors because of the information this app was giving me over the course of the last few days? I have not. It just didn't really say, hey, this was really bad today. This is why you wanna fix it. And here's how to fix it or some tips or some things you can try. It never really did that for me. And something I wanna note, I'm young, relatively healthy individual. Some of these metrics just don't matter to me or aren't relevant to me right now at this time. But for example, blood oxygen levels, you're like your SpO2 levels during sleep, uh, throughout the day, that could be very important to some people. Uh, heart rate variability is important. I wanna know if my body is in a stressed state or not. So again, useful information, but just maybe a little bit more encouragement from the app would be great. Now I wanna go over the battery life because that is fantastic. If we go to the top right corner and click the little ring icon there, you can see I still have 78% battery life remaining. So we went down about 22% over the course of the last four or five days, which is really, really good. It says remaining eight days, 13 hours left of battery life. That is insane. That is well over a week. That is almost two weeks of battery life coming off of one full charge. I have not plugged this back into the charger 
ever since I unplugged it and paired it with you live on camera. I did not expect the ring to feel this premium. It really feels amazing and looks really good too and fits well on the finger. It even sparked a few conversations at work, day to day, uh, even just with my friends. But as you have heard, there are some things that have been sort of disappointing, um, such as the fact that it won't automatically detect when I'm working out. And I'm just gonna forget to log my workouts. I'm not gonna do that, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna go back in there and log a workout and do what I did. I'm just gonna let it not have that information. You know what I mean? So auto detection for workouts would be great. Also, the app I feel like could use improvements overall. Uh, I don't know specifically what, maybe with the design, uh, maybe with the look of it. Like, just give me some good practical encouraging advice and tell me why I want to know that advice in a very simple TLDR format and we can go from there. But I do think it needs a little bit of a sort of design update too. But again, that's a software thing. Those are things that the app or the people at Rincon can update at any point and they might, which is really, really good and promising. Of course, no product is perfect and the Rincon Gen 2 does have a few limitations worth knowing. First, while the sleep apnea detection feature is incredibly promising, it's important to note that it's not FDA approved, so it should not replace a clinical diagnosis. You need to keep in mind that you can only pair one ring per account at a time, which might be inconvenient if you're planning to upgrade or share the device across family members. And lastly, while my syncing experience was mostly smooth, uh, as you saw, I've seen reports from some users mentioning occasional lag during syncing, something that the app could hopefully improve with future updates. But overall, none of these were deal breakers for me, just things to be aware of if you're considering making a purchase or making the switch from Gen 1. So here's the bottom line. The Rincon Gen 2 is a rock solid smart ring. It's packed with advanced health insights. It's incredibly lightweight. And best of all, there's no subscription required to unlock any of its features. The Rincon Gen 2 is a perfect fit for people who care about sleep, recovery, and stress management, or anyone who wants a discreet, all-day wearable without sacrificing power or accuracy. Now remember, I've got the best deal linked in the video description down below, or you can scan the QR code that you see on screen right now. For everything this ring offers, from sleep apnea detection to week-long battery life, it's one of the smartest health investments that you can make. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in another tech review.